as usual, you know, we have the connected, we have the little Q&A at the end. Okay. So we are, oh, we are live on YouTube already. It says we're already live. Usually I have to click a little button, go live. But it sounds like we're live already. Well, Clear Vision Wednesday, here we are. I am Claudia Mühlenweg. Um, I am the founder of Holistic Vision and the creator of the Naturally Clear Vision Method. And today we want to talk about blue light, to block or not to block. And I do want to say before we get going that I'm not dispensing medical advice. I'm not a doctor. I give, I educate, I teach you, I empower you to take your own smart, make your own smart decisions, but I'm not giving you medical advice. So this is not replacing eye care by eye care professional. I really want to make that clear before we get going because blue light does have implications to eye health for sure. So that's not a myth. That's true, but let's backtrack a little bit. I don't have a slideshow, so I'm just going to talk. I have some notes here that I'm going to be looking at. But basically, the reason we even have eyesight is to inform our brain what time of the day it is, because it's very important for our body to know if it's daytime or nighttime. So, and the eyes are part of the brain, and I do talk about that all the time. And the retina is actually part of the brain, not the whole eyeball. But it's like, think of your eyeballs as an extension, like, you know, as if you put part of the brain that you can put on the outside, um, that's the only part of the brain that's outside. And you've probably heard of two common photoreceptor cells in our retina, the cone cells and the rod cells. Those are the ones that we usually talk about. We have about 15 to 20 million of those cells in our retina. Um, and the cone cells are the ones that give you color vision. They give you the detail vision, the sharpness, the visual acuity. The majority of them are in the center of our eyes in the macula. And then they kind of did get dispersed. And then at the outer edges of the retina, we pretty much only have rod cells. And rod cells are also interspersed in the middle. Rod cells are, they don't have color vision, but they are our night vision cells. So when you, when there's no light outside at night, you probably notice that there's no color perception. So rod cells give us movement on the periphery. They give us night vision and they're pretty grainy, but no color vision. And it's a pretty recent discovery about 20 years ago and Sajan Patel was one of the biggest uh, researchers in this project. They've discovered a third type of retinal cell. And I have to read that because I don't wanna mess this up, but they're basically called intrinsically photosensitive cells and they're retinal ganglion cells. So ganglion refers to the brain, ganglion, and they're not contributing to what we consider eyesight, like you know, reading an eye chart or something like that. And we have about 5,000 to 8,000 of these cells. And the proper name of these cells is melanopsin retinal ganglion cells. And these cells have a built-in melanopsin sensor. So what does that mean? Melanopsin basically, or melatonin, you might have heard of melatonin, right? It's a pigmentation, but it basically tells our brain when it's daytime and when it's nighttime. And the, the way they do this they're very sensitive to blue light. You know, they also react to, to, to violet and orange and green light, but these cells are specifically designed to sense blue light. And the crazy thing is they even work in blind people. So if you have no vision, assuming that you, that you have eyes still, right? That you still have a retina, but even blind people that don't have any visual acuity or any actual, what we would call vision, have these cells and they know when it's daytime and when it's nighttime. And these melanopsin retinal ganglion cells affect our pupillary constriction, right? The pupils getting smaller and bigger. They affect our circadian rhythms, our mood, our sleep, our appetite, our blood sugar levels, and our dopamine levels. So these cells are super, super important. And they've only been discovered about 20 years ago or so. And basically, the blue light is, is blue light is really basically what turns off our melatonin production in the morning. So melatonin, you know, you might have heard of that. I might have taken that in the evening if you had sleep problems. So melatonin is this hormone that gets secreted to make us tired. And the only reason it gets secreted in the evening is because there's no blue light, right? So that, you know, when we, when we go back, when we backtrack before we had electricity and all these devices, the only, you know, blue light is obviously in the sunlight. So the only way that, you know, once the sun went down, we had candles, 
those are really warm light. There's no blue light and candles. So, you know, then the body got automatically tired. The brain was like, okay, it's time to kind of chill out and get tired. And then when the sun rose in the morning, right, the blue light, we got the blue light and we woke up and we got the energy and all that, the blood sugar levels, the cortisol rising, all those things happening, appetite kicking in. So that's, that's kind of, but you need to know that these cells exist that are not related to our actual visual acuity. So, and I'm looking at my notes, so I'm not missing anything up. So the book, uh, the book, I, I actually lend it to somebody and I have, haven't gotten it back, but it's called the circadian code, the circadian code by Dr. Sachin Panda. I said Patel earlier, that's my Panda. Um, I don't know why I messed that up, but basically Sachin Panda wrote this book, the circadian code, and that really explains beautifully why it's so important. So the blue light, so the first good thing about blue light, it keeps us in this daytime and nighttime. It keeps us in this rhythm of the biorhythm of our waking up and getting sleepy. So that's one good thing about blue light. It does have some of the, maybe let's talk a little bit about some of the not so good things. It does have, it has some of the highest energy in terms of light uh, of all the different uh, light uh, frequency colors. And it can definitely, so blue light can definitely cause damage in our retina for sure. And we will talk about why or what you can do to prevent that. So basically now, you know, in the old, like again, in the old days, we got the blue light, it's in the sunlight, even though the sunlight feels warm to us, it's actually pretty cold light. And we have now, we have all these, you know, LED lights, we have fluorescent lights, we have all these screens, right? We have our phones, we have all these devices that emit a lot of blue light, but very little like warm tones. So most of the screens have a really high spike in blue and green light, basically nothing warm compared to the sunlight that has the spectrum of all, like the rainbow, right? The rainbow colors that appear to be white in combination, but they have all the different wavelengths in them. So these screens definitely now, so basically what we, we're getting a way higher doses of blue light than we were getting before we had all these, before we had electricity and all these um, blue light devices, basically a blue light emitting devices. So, Usually we, we are really concerned about UV light and UV light is basically, when you look at the eyes, UV light gets mostly absorbed by the cornea and the lens. Blue light, and, and, but goes further into the eye and actually goes all the way to the retina. So the retina really gets the blue light. Um, and that's, you might've heard of age-related macular degeneration. But here's the thing, we have these, nutrients of, you know, what you want to call them vitamins, or they're actually plant pigments, they're carotenoids, they're in that family of the carotenoids, the, the orange, yeah, right, you want carrots, right? think of carrots, so better carotene there, and that kind of family, and when, if you've ever taken eye vitamins, you've taken these, you know, nutrients, and they're called lutein, and zeaxanthin, and zeaxanthin has two kinds, there's the ones that we just call zeaxanthin, and then there is mesozeaxanthin. So all three of these pigments basically cover your macula and they absorb, I found different numbers, but about 60 to 80% of the blue light. So, and actually this can be measured and I have to look at my notes again because I, I'm not, the, the term, the, in an eye exam that can measure that it's called macular pigment optical density, MPOD. And that's how they measure how high your level of these three carotenoids, lutein, zeac like just let's just say lutein and zeaxanthin because that's the two kinds. But basically the lower your levels of these two nutrients or three nutrients really, the higher your risk of age-related macular degeneration. And the higher the levels of these um, nutrients are, the, the lower your level of age-related macular de risk of getting um, the eye disease like macular degeneration, and you also see improvements in visual performance and acuity. You have reduced glare sensitivity, enhanced contrast sensitivity, and improved vision and dim light. So getting, having, and that we cannot produce these on our own, right? We have to get them from the diet. So you've heard this over and over again, right? You've heard people say, eat your dark leafy greens, right? The kale, the spinach, the collard greens, the chard. And yes, these are the highest 
in looting the accent. And those are the highest, uh, you know, amounts that you can find in, in plant foods. And um, um, raw egg yolks also have them, but I don't know, red, raw egg yolks have all kinds of health concerns and issues. And if you eat eggs or not, but if you cook the eggs then you basically don't get that lutein from the egg yolk. And then other bare, bit better carotenes like carrots and all the orange vegetables, but they have way lower levels of lutein and zeaxanthin than the dark leafy greens. So you do want to eat the dark leafy greens at every single meal. And if you have a diet that's pizza, pasta, fast food, hamburgers, you're not you're 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 basically have a really high risk with the blue light. However, if you get all these nutrients and if you eat healthy and you know, there's obviously supplementation available. There's eye vitamins. I like a brand called Pure Synergy that has a, something called an eye protector. Is there eye protector? Is there? I'm not affiliated with this company. I want to be. I'm not affiliated with them yet, but I love their very high quality levels of ingredients. It's all natural sources. So they have very, I look with like 99% of supplements, I think are crap. So I really, when I look for supplements, I look for high quality. And again, most of the eye vitamins that you can buy have a lot of fillers and bad stuff. So Pure Synergy is a brand that I like. Uh, eye Protector is, is the product. But basically, you know, most people probably need to supplement at some point in their life, especially. And here's the thing. Supplementation is not a replacement for a crappy diet. You do want to eat a good diet and then maybe you just get that extra. That's why I love the eye protector, right? It's kind of you want that extra protection from taking those in addition to a good diet to really protect your macula. But here's the thing. Um, we do need blue light. Like blue light is super important. Um, and blue light is okay and it's good for us. And in fact, sunlight is necessary for our health. And uh, this is not a lecture about sunlight, but that's part of that natural vision improvement is big importance is sunning and being outside in the sunlight. And I give you some protocols at the end, but you definitely want sunlight first thing in the morning. You want that blue light. You want to stop the melatonin production. You want to wake up and feel energized and be in a good mood and get that appetite, right? Get that dopamine level up, all that, all that good stuff. So you want that. And you also want that in the evening so that you get the last sunlight so that you build a really healthy circadian rhythm. And so when we look at, let me look at my notes, make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh yeah, there was one more thing I wanted to talk about. So with these lutein and zeaxanthin, it's really important that you don't just take lutein because all three of them are in different parts of the, the macula. So I don't have my tray here, but think of the macula as like, think of the bolts, like if you have a dartboard, right? So the macula is the center and it's not exactly in the center. It's a little bit because we have two eyes and it's a little bit off center, but pre pretend it's in the center. So the macula is about, um, uh, I think it's about five millimeter in size and the whole eyeball is about one inch in size. And it's, it's a pretty small area, but inside the macula, the very, very tiny spot in the middle is called the fovea, the yellow spot. So the, the fo so basically when you look at these three um, carotenoids, carotenoids, I always struggle with that word. Um, basically the, the outer part of the, the macula, right? So think of the macula as a little bigger and then inside is the fovea, the center, it's like this little dot in the middle. The outer part of the macula, that's where lutein, that's where most of the lutein is. The, the zeaxanthin is in the middle part of the macula. Now talking about the whole retina, just the macula, the center of your eye. And the meso zeaxanthin is in the center in the fovea. So you really need all three of these nutrients to protect your macula um, from the blue light. So taking a supplement might be a good idea, especially if you're older, especially if you have macular degeneration in your family. But again, it doesn't taking those supplements doesn't mean that you can eat donuts and hamburgers and have healthy eyes, right? <laughs> it's not that simple. So the difference to sunlight is also that sunlight has the full spectrum. You have the healing near and far infrared lights and sunlight, the long wavelength red, red lights that you now, now are becoming popular too and infrared saunas and infrared healing lights. And those are really beneficial for your eyes. They help rejuvenate the mitochondria and your retinal cells, which is the little batteries, um, which tend to kind of get weaker as we age when we're over 45. Those, ret those mitochondria and the retinal cells kind of deteriorate. So getting natural light is a really good thing. No sunglasses, 
especially in the morning and the evening. You don't want to wear sunglasses. You want to get the actual full spectrum light into your eyes. So let's talk about blue blocking because that's really what the topic was about today. So blue blocking is important, um, especially like before bedtime. And when we have the longer, and if you, especially if you live in Scandinavia or somewhere, but about it takes about two to three hours um, for your body to release enough melatonin to make you tired after the after the last you know, flash of blue light, so to speak, from the sun or from artificial sources. So you want about two to three hours before bed, you don't want any more blue light. Now, in the, you know, if you go to bed, depending on when you go to bed, if you go to bed like me, I go to bed pretty early around 9 p.m. And it's still almost like it's just, just starting to get dark now in the summer here in California. But I know when I lived in Germany in the summer, it would be 11 p.m. by the time it got dark. So if you go to bed earlier, you need to close the nightshades. You need to make sure not the night, not the nightshades, vegetables, but that you know the, your shades. You want to make sure you don't get any more blue light from LED lamps. From maybe you have some full spectrum lights that you use for work. Make sure you have you know there's light bulbs where you now can cut, switch the color temperature. Or I have a little cheap IKEA lamp that's a that's an orange light lampshade, right? Even though there's a daytime light lamp in there, but it makes the light all orangey and warm, maybe candlelight. So you definitely don't want any more blue light. Um, and this is a good time if you do have some blue light sources that you cannot change, or you like, for instance, TV screens, right? A lot of them have blue light and you can't really change that. There's different blue blocking glasses uh, I like this brand. It's called Ezekiel Ion. It's a brand from Canada. They also block EMFs. So they look like this. They have a very slight, there's different styles, of course. They have a very slight uh, yellow tint, but very minor. So they give you pretty, pretty accurate vision without like making it really orangey. So these are good. I, I recommend using these kind of glasses in the evening. If you work on the computer in the evening, again, in that three hour window before bedtime, you can wear these if you watch TV. Another brand is Ra Optics, Ra like R-A, the sun, the sun god. So these are some color glasses I got from Ra Optics. They are very orange, but they make everything, yeah, they make everything look yellow. And that's, you might like that or you might not like that, but that's what I use when I watch TV. I use either one of those kind of glasses. Um, but here's what I would recommend during the day and for soft, for screens. Use software. There is built-in software, and um, and I have this on my phone, and I have this on all day long, because I don't want that extra kick of blue light from the screen. So on on Apple devices, it's called night shift mode, and Android devices, it's called night light. I'm not sure about PC computers, but almost all screens now have some kind of built-in blue light filtering um, app or software. Um, and you can also use an app. There's an app called Iris, irisTech.co. It's it's a paid app, and there's a free app called Flux, F L U X. You can just Google that. And basically, what I would recommend, I have my screens on this orangey kind of tint, and I have a MacBook and I have an iPhone, so I use the the built-in um, software from Apple. But basically, I have mine turned on all the time. I have it set from 4 a.m. to 3.59 a.m. because you can't have it on 24-7. Um, so I don't just do sunset to sunrise. I have this on all the time um, on all my screens. So that's what I would recommend. And you can decide how warm you want, how yellow you want to make your screen. And of course, if you're a color retoucher or if you work with colors, you know, and you have to work with a color accurate monitor, in my former work as a designer, you know, we had to have really color accurate monitors. In that case, I would recommend that you wear blue blockers. And then when you retouch something or you work on a file that has to be color accurate, then you have that moment where you have the blue light into your eyes, but there is really no magic solution for that. But for everybody else that doesn't really need color accuracy on their screens, use the software and then you get the natural blue light Right, I'm getting it through my windows, the natural daylight that keeps me alert and awake. So that's what I recommend. Um, if you're very, very sensitive, you can certainly wear blue blocking glasses during the day, but I personally don't recommend them outside of that window where you wanna go to bed, you wanna get tired. So that's, that's when I use those blue blocking glasses. 
especially if you have like a TV screen like mine, which is older, it doesn't have any blue blocking software that you can install. So in terms of protocol, make sure you get the blue light first thing in the morning, two to 10 minutes, no sunglasses, not through the window, go outside, you get the, the amount of lux. So even through a, a clean window that you washed, that's not dirty, is way reduced to the actual amount of lux that you're getting outside. Even if it's overcast, even if it's just before sunrise, you still get blue light. Of course, the blue light levels increase dramatically once the, once the day starts and the sunlight, the sun rises. But even before sunlight, if you wake, have to wake up before the sun rises, which is not ideal, but if you have to for your work or you do, you work shifts, then, you know, getting one of those lamps that imitate uh, the daylight, right? That kind of uh, seasonal affective disorder, those lamps, those would be good. Or those alarm clocks that kind of um, create the blue light, they, they, they mimic the sunlight. So that's what I would recommend. But if you can wake up to the natural light, that's ideal. And then go outside two minutes if it's already sunny, 10 minutes if it's overcast or before sunrise, and then do the same thing in the evening. Use um, blue blocking screen software during the day. Um, use um, full spectrum light bulbs during the day, like, you know, those kind of, Ott, Ott is a great company, Ott Light, O-T-T. They have these amazing um, daylight lamps or light bulbs. And I like them during the day because they keep me alert. And if I'm working and if I'm reading a book, I want that. But if I'm reading a book at, in bed at nighttime, I don't want the blue light, right? Because that would keep me awake. So uh, use maybe orange lampshades, but make the light warm three hours before bedtime. Also avoid really bright lights before bedtime, because again, that kicks you up into that wake wakefulness cycle. And then lastly, um, use the blue blocking glasses for any screens that where you don't can't use software if you want to get the extra EMF blocking from the Ezekiel glasses. And then make sure that you eat a really clean, good diet, that you get lots of lutein and zeaxanthin from your diet or you supplement with um, eye protector or other um, good eye vitamin supplements. So that's basically what I wanted to share today. And I'm going to look at the chat. Um, what if you go to bed just after sunset? Uh, that's fine, Pete. Uh, Pete is asking on YouTube, what if you go to bed just after sunset? I, I mean, I actually, I've been going to bed really early. I'm sometimes doing yoga nidra. I actually put a, a mask on my eyes, uh, not just because of the sun, because also there's so much light pollution. My neighbors have a porch light on that's really bright and shining into my bedroom. So that's what I do. I would wear a mask basically if you, you know. Um, but yeah, if you, if, you know, I, I don't have a problem falling asleep, but if you go to bed right after sunset, then maybe wearing um, the blue blocking, maybe wearing these kind of glasses, either these or the Ezekiel ones, two to three hours before you go to bed is a good idea for you, right? If you go to bed, like, or if you go to bed when it's already sunny, then maybe that's, let's say you, you're working a night shift, like my sister is a nurse, she works different shifts. So for her, maybe on her drive back from work, right, assuming she's not going to fall asleep driving, you know, maybe wearing some blue blocking glasses like this, maybe this is not good because you might not see the yellow in the traffic light, but, you know, wearing some blue blocking glasses like that to kind of transition um, into the into the tiredness zone by the time she gets home. So that's what I would recommend. And let me look at this. If there's any other questions on YouTube, otherwise um, we will stop the YouTube live. I will, we will put all the resources that I mentioned onto the YouTube, into the comments. Don't have them in there yet. But yeah, if you have any other questions, okay, let me look. How does blue light relate to UVA or UVB? Is it important to block both for our eyes? Um, it's, it's a different, it's different light, part of the sunlight. And yes, it depends. So here's the thing, like our eyes are the light receiving organs, right? So for us to think that sunlight is really horrible is not a good idea. I think sunlight is super important. We now have, we have so many studies showing how healing sunlight is. But yes, if you have certain conditions, if you have certain eye diseases, if you have um, macular degeneration, you definitely don't want to expose your eyes during the day in the bright, like if you live in Southern California, like me, where the sunlight is very strong, you definitely want to wear blue blockers or UV blockers during the middle of the day. Absolutely. If you are in extreme conditions like skiing or if you're on the ocean and if your pupils don't constrict, I haven't talked about that today, but your pupils 
you know, constrict when it's really bright, but if you have any issues with pupil constriction. So I haven't worn sunglasses in 20 years and my vision has been, is better than ever. Um, but does that mean that I'm recklessly being outside? Here's the thing. Most of us don't get enough UV light and, and blue light from the sun. No, no actually, let's refer, change that. We get enough blue light from the screens. But when you think about the time, like I actually have construction when I'm looking outside my window, I have, I'm building a guest house. So I have these, these hardworking guys, you know, digging in my yard all day long. They are outside all day long, really. So for them, that's a different story than for most of us that are working inside or that are, you know, indoors most of the day. We don't get enough UV light, actually. We need UV light, right? Um, but, but when you are working outside all day long, that's a different story. So there's really no one fits all, but the blue light is super important for our circadian rhythm. So I don't want to block blue light from the sunlight, but we want to block the extra blue light that we're getting from the screens. And yes, with UV light, depending on your circumstances, for some of you that might be important to be careful with, you know, skin cancer, there's a lot of things that are related to UV light and skin damage and, um, and eye damage. So definitely you wanna use precaution, especially if you are a Northern European person like me and living in Southern California, I'm not like, you know, sitting outside in the middle of the day without any protection for sure. So any other questions? Otherwise I would end the YouTube live. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, um, click the little bell so that you get notified. I have an amazing guest speaker next week and um, I have to bring up my little notes to see what the, we came up with a really good title today, but now I can't find my, my note app. <laughs> oh, here we go. Let me find it. But yeah, next Wednesday, it's Louise Schwarzwalder. I'm probably screwing up her name, even though it's basically based on German, Louise Schwarzwalder. And the title of her presentation is Five Steps to Release Trauma and Improve Your Vision. So she is doing some amazing work with the brain and balancing the brain and releasing trauma. And um, I can't wait. So she's going to be here next Wednesday. We have a longer session next Wednesday with my guest, Louise Schwarzwalder. And um, every Wednesday, there's a different topic. You can let me know what topic you want me to talk about. Put that in the comment. Any questions, this is going to stay on YouTube. I will answer any questions that you have afterwards as well. Even if you're not joining us live, I'm just looking one last time if there's any comments but or questions, no. So goodbye, everybody on YouTube live. And for the people or members of my Clear Vision Club, they are going to be with us or with me in this case today on Zoom, and we're going to have a little extra Q&A afterwards. So everybody, goodbye on YouTube. I see you next week. And the live stream. All right. And then I will end.